for joining me as we explore yet another avenue on the path of the seeker. Today I wanted to share with you a story um, that I first read about in a book called When Everything Falls Apart by a Buddhist monk, which I'll have in the description box below. Um, it has to do with meditation, but it also really kind of applies to spiritual growth as well. When we first start on the, start out on the path and we first start meditating, we start off and our mind is kind of like a rock. It's very solid, has very solid ideas. This is a piece of smoky quartz actually. And it's not very flexible. You know, if you were to throw this at something, it wouldn't be malleable at all. And this is what we start off. This is a rock of a mind that's just very hard to deal with. And that's why when you first start off, it's easy to do activities. Um, such as writing or walking meditations as opposed to going straight into sitting down and trying to find your seat as they say in Buddhism because at first your mind is full of race thought it will tell you you know you're not good enough it's not ana it's inadequate this is not working what's the purpose of all this and so when we start first start that's how everybody starts off whether you're a Buddhist monk or anybody else our mind starts off with this very solid crystallized chunk of thoughts that we have to work through and as we work with it, it becomes more malleable it becomes more like clay you know, I have a piece of clay to show you but you can start to actually work with it and mold it eventually once you have let go of many of those thoughts that were very limiting and kept you stuck in the box type thinking you know, it will become a seed your mind will turn into a seed this is a seed from one of my favorite flowers um, and once you change your mind into that seed you can actually plant that into your subconscious and you can start working with that so that what you want starts to happen as opposed to what you think you deserve or what other people just tell you that you deserve or should happen or should want you start to have the seeds that you can start planting in your garden your subconscious that will help you through life and actually achieve things that you want as opposed to being stuck in the old patterns your family might have created or you got into when you were a kid in high school or however that conditioning happened. Eventually, as you grow further, your mind will become like a flower. And then what the Buddhists actually call this is turning the rock into a flower. And so you can see, you would think that this is not a very fertile place for growth. You wouldn't expect a beautiful flower such as this one to appear out of a rock like this. And yet, when you work through with your mind, eventually as you become this, this becomes more fertile, as it becomes more malleable, and your subconscious becomes more accessible, and you can plant those seeds, eventually you'll end up with a flower and a beautiful life. I mean, the flower is flexible, spell is beautiful, attracts other people. Everybody wants to be a flower. Don't know many people who would say they want to be a rock, even if it's a beautiful smoky quartz rock like this one. So that is the purpose of our spiritual path. One of the many things and one of the many benefits that you have when you walk down the spiritual path of the seeker is you will actually start to attract people to you based on how your thinking is. So when you are out and about and they can sense your peaceful, calming presence because you cultivated that. You cultivated your mind. It's the same idea as whenever you grow a garden or you plant something in a field. Basically, you have to start off with fertile soil. If you start off with extremely rocky soil, some things may survive, mostly weeds. And you really don't want weeds in your garden of life. You really don't need the rocks so much. You can appreciate the rocks. They are our mineral brothers and sisters, as the Native Americans say. But you really can't work in a field and cultivate a field or a garden if it's filled with rocks, because not much survives there. What does survive there tends to be scraggly. We all want the beautiful flowers that attract and bring wonderful things, bring the bees and the butterflies to our garden so that they can pollinate and spread. So. That is the story of the rock and the flower. And that is what basically a metaphor for the spiritual path. Whether it's specifically about meditation and learning to turn the mind, which is solid and crystallized, into something more flexible, where you can plant the seeds that you wish to see, take fruit and or take root and then multiply in the future. 
or you can eventually, and you will eventually actually, because you it is an and situation, you will then grow a beautiful flower that will attract everybody else and bring prosperity to your life. So thank you very much for joining me today in this little simple metaphorical description of the path of the seeker. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can apply it. And as we go through alchemy, we're going to understand that the rock is our mind, even in alchemy, just like in Buddhism. We start off with a rock for a mind, crystallized thoughts. And then we go through a process of transforming this rock, much into a flower, but they call it a little bit something different than that. But either way, thank you for joining me, and I hope you got something out of that, and have a wonderful day.